Hey everybody, this is Bill Murphy here with MMORPG.com uh, and today we're going to do a, a new video series that I'm going to be calling the RPG in dot dot dot. Uh, as you probably know and probably realize yourselves, over the past several years uh, many games, whether they're calling themselves RPGs or calling themselves MMOs or not, are starting to add more and more RPG-like and MMO-like features. Um, so one of the things that I think would be fun to do, and it's not like we're going to be adding these games to the MMORPG list or anything like that, is to take a look at some big releases or some new releases, interesting games that come out and may have RPG-like aspects to them, uh, or even MMO aspects to them. And with that uh, said, today we're going to be taking a look at Assassin's Creed Unity from Ubisoft and the RPG aspects that are therein. Now, as you are probably quite familiar, uh, Assassin's Creed is the yearly series from Ubisoft that puts you in the role of a historical assassin um, going through an open world, killing people, and doing, you know, intrigue with a grand storyline. Uh, that ties both to the past and the present with Abstergo Entertainment. And every year, the game seems to get more and more RPG-like, too, with its character progression and development. As you can see, I'm, I'm outside Notre Dame right now during the French Revolution with things burning and all that cool stuff. Uh, so it's a great place to hang out and just uh, and talk with an axe on my back and talk about the RPG aspects of the game. So uh, one of the, the first things you'll get after the tutorial missions is your character customization menus will open up and this is where all the skills gear and boosts which we'll talk about soon are in the game now skills are uh, are very tied to the the abilities of your assassin of Arno there are four different categories from melee to ranged stealth and health melee of course only has a few things that you could level up and as you uh, unlock different missions, you'll gain access to them. Which is funny, because the game is mostly melee based. But there are more ranged based things. These are like little smaller skills, like stun grenades, an assassin cache. Uh, you have a, a, a money pouch bomb that'll make a crowd circle around you and try to pick up money so you can hide away from things. You can also get the improved phantom blade, which is, it lets you fire the phantom blade right into the back of people's heads, which I'm looking forward to after sequence 9. Uh, and of course, poison gas bombs. And then the stealth one is really cool because there's a lot of different things you can do. Uh, there's actually a multiplayer mode that's sort of seamless, like Watch Dogs multiplayer. You can run in, run these uh, sort of instanced or phased missions throughout the game. You'll stumble across multiplayer missions that let you team up with other assassins. And you can buy some skills in the game that will let you share your eagle vision with allied players. Um, it'll let you heal allied players too. It's pretty cool. Um, there's also Disguise, which is pretty cool. You can pick an NPC and disguise yourself as them. There's lock picking in the game. Uh, there's Roll Recovery, which lets you fall from a very far distance and roll. You actually can't do that until you pick up the ability, so don't go jumping off of ledges thinking you're invincible early in the game. Uh, and of course, there's more lock picking. There's uh, double assassinations, environmental blending, which lets you sit with dudes and be like, hey, look, I'm just a normal guy. Pretty cool stuff. And the double air assassination is probably one of the favorites there. Look at that video. Um, and of course, there's some health upgrades as well. These are all my, you know, not major skill trees like you're going to find in uh, Shadow of Mordor or anything like that, but small RPG-like aspects. I mean, you even have health potions that you you grab and pick up. It, it, more and more, Assassin's Creed is becoming like an open-world action RPG uh, as the years go on. But that's not the only part of the game that is RPG-like. We actually have a bunch of gear in this game. Uh, the gear you equip your Arno with is the gear you'll take into the multiplayer co-op missions as well. So this is really your chance to make your assassin your own so that when you're playing multiplayer you don't just look like a bunch of clones. There are tons of weapons in the game. From one-handed, which includes all these different kinds of single-handed swords. Look at them. I mean, some of them are awesome. There's maces in there, morning stars, things like that. And of course, there are really expensive swords as well. And then the Sword of Eden. You have to uh, finish all of Arno's memories and unlock the, and, and everything like that to open it up. But believe it or not, this is where some of the weird stuff comes in with the gear. There's a ton of it to buy and a ton of it to unlock to sort of equip your character with. And they all uh, increase your abilities. And 
and increase your, your stats, your damage, your speed, your range, everything like that. But you actually have multiple currencies in this game. You have one that is just your regular in-game money currency. That's the little F there. And then you have your assassin currency, which is what you buy skill points with. And then you also have, like, assassin points, which you can use to upgrade uh, different pieces of gear and stuff like that. But then you have your, I think they, they want to call it hack points, maybe? It's that H on the far right over there where it says hack. That's actually in-game currency. You, you can buy that in-game currency like you would in a free-to-play MMO. I know this is kind of appalling, right? And then open these and get these weapons without having to actually spend the time in-game to unlock them and earn them. Uh, it's pretty weird, considering this game already costs 60 bucks to buy, and then they want you to buy in-game currency to unlock stuff early. But I'm sure there's going to be some people who do it, and since this isn't really a game that's about uh, pay-to-win in a PvP sense, whatever, more power to them. I won't be spending tens and dozens and maybe even hundreds of dollars on this on this uh, currency, but I'm sure there are people out there who just can't wait or can't can't work their way up to get these things like the Pike Hammer. Like, look at that. It takes 200,000 of the actual in-game currency, but if you had enough money, I'm sure you could hack it. That one, that 1,000 H right there, I think that's, uh, that's 100 bucks, maybe? I don't even know. It's a lot of money to unlock these things, the ceremonial partisan. So, uh, a lot of different gears, a lot of different, uh, items and things you can use. Unlike other Assassin's Creed games, you can't equip multiple weapons at once. Um, you have to equip just one and go with it and then you can swap it out out of combat. But there's also, believe it or not, you can change the entire look of your character with armor sets and colors. Everything. Every single color. Now, I don't know why an assassin would want to be bright yellow, but in multiplayer games it might look kind of cool. Same thing with, uh, you have this dark red one. The wildfire, red and burgundy. You're really going to stand out from a crowd, but let's not let's not kid ourselves here. We're not trying to be super realistic with Assassin's Creed these days, are we? When you jump off the top of Notre Dame and land in a hay bale and you're okay. It's not exactly realism. Um, so you can edit the colors, and you can, of course, buy and earn more different color sets. You can edit each piece of individual armor and pick different pieces. Some of them from past games, other are completely inspired by the era. So you know, you've got the medieval hood. You can find a lot of cool stuff, uh, a lot of different hoods and things like that. Uh, chest, forearms, everything, okay? You can pick pretty much anything you want to be. You've got your medieval coats. You don't have to look like you're from this time period. You can look like however you want, really. Um, and then, of course, there are full outfits that you can purchase as well that you can uh, usually have to earn them. Like this one right here, Edward's Assassin Outfit. If you played Edward Kenway in Assassin's Creed Black Flag, guess what? You own it. Then there's Ezio's Outfit. If you uh, play Assassin's Creed Initiates, which again, you'd, you'd want to play uh, Assassin's Creed Others games, and you you unlock this. the The initiates thing is pretty cool. It's actually like a companion, a web based uh, profile system that records all of your actions and and gameplay throughout the many Assassin's Creed games. So if you uh, the, the downside being that if you haven't played those games while actually activating your initiates, uh, your initiates profile, you're not going to be able to unlock these outfits. It's almost like saying, hey, if you really want these outfits, you might as well go back and go to Uplay and on the PC and, and buy all of our other Assassin's Creed games so you can get them, but I don't think I'll be doing that. The outfits that you can buy in the game are enough. Um, so that's it, you know, uh, there's also some boosts and things like that that you can buy, again, with the in-game money. So if you want to talk about a, a single-player game acting more and more like a free-to-play MMO, Assassin's Creed Unity is probably a good bet. But outside of that, there are some frame rate issues in this game. You're going to see a lot of reviews hampering on it for being maybe released a little bit too early. It's a bit too buggy. And I would say that that's actually uh, the case in, a, in a, lot of, a lot of ways. It's not, that it's, it's not that it's bad. The game's still fun. It's still enjoyable. But much like Assassin's Creed Black Flag last year... It seems as though they rushed it out the door to hit their yearly mark. And I'm starting to think that now, with a new generation of consoles, maybe they should skip next year, 
take a full two years to reboot this franchise, to sort of re-figure out where they want to go with it now that we're into a next generation of consoles, and come back fresh and strong. The Assassin's Creed games have always been fun, but if your quality is suffering by trying to meet these yearly deadlines, that's not always a good thing. Um, you, can, you can check it out. Uh, you can check out the game on Uplay, on Steam, on Xbox One and PlayStation 4 for 60 bucks. If I were you, though, and you're not a super huge fan of Assassin's Creed games, I would say wait for a sale. However, if you are a giant fan of these games, you're, you're not going to be disappointed. It's still very fun. It's just a little buggy and a little unpolished. Uh, the frame rate issues that a lot of folks are talking about are probably the biggest thing, but hopefully that can be patched to be fixed later. Uh, that's it for me, guys. Uh, thanks for watching this first inaugural episode of the RPG in Assassin's Creed Unity. You can follow, follow us on Twitter, Twitch, YouTube, and Facebook at MMORPGcom without the dot. And if you feel like it, you can follow me on Facebook, or I'm sorry, on Twitter. You can't follow me on Facebook. Follow me on Twitter at the Bill Murphy. As always, don't let a bad pug get you down. <laughs>